I believe in divine appointment. I was born into a devout Muslim home, and God had plans, wonderful plans. I've been there. On the day I was going to kill myself, Jesus revealed himself to me, and he gave me a new life. And if you pray with me, and if you believe with me, God is going to give you a new life today. Jesus Christ is real. He changes life, he changes destiny, and he changes nations. And those nations can change the world. Romans 10, 11 says, anyone who believes in him, anyone who believes in Jesus Christ, will never be put to shame. Today I want to talk to you about freedom from shame and guilt. Freedom. As I said earlier, God wants to set us free from all paralyzing diseases. They are unseen, but they cripple us. They paralyze us. And last time I talked to you about fear, paralyzing power of fear, but perfect love takes care of it. You need perfect love. And today I want to talk to you about guilt, shame, and condemnation. These are the things that God set me free, and I am sharing them with you. It's all testimonial. It is all true experience, my experience with Jesus Christ. So these are not on the head knowledge. I experience these freedom in my life. God comes and sets us free from darkness, from curse, because of Adam and Eve committed, because of their sin. We, we live in a cursed world. God wants to set us free. God wants to set us free from death. He wants to give you eternal freedom. And also God wants to set us free from many, many stuff that clings to us because of a false religion, false beliefs. Today, guilt, shame, and condemnation, they, those things weigh us down, friends. When you have guilt in your life and you only operate through guilt, you live in bondage. I live my life with always guilt. I always had a guilty conscience. I remember when I was a new baby in Christ, one day my pastor said, uh, can I speak with you for a minute? And the first reaction that I gave him, first answer, did I do something wrong? <laughs> he said, no, I just want to talk to you about something that I am going to ask you to do. Can you speak at one of our events? But the first thing, if somebody told me, can I speak with you or can I have a word with you, the first Thing I would think in the past, I have done something wrong. And you live with that. It is part of fear, with guilty conscience. I was raised that way. I remember if I was going out of the house to school and I have done something displeasing my parents, my mother would say, oh, you disobey me and you're going out, see what's going to happen to you. You are going to see the penalty of disobeying me. So I always lived with guilt and shame and condemnation. I thought, if I hit my hands, I'm not joking. If I hurt myself, and then I would ask, what did I do wrong five minutes ago? If something went wrong in my life that day, I would ask, what did I say to my mother? What did I do to my dad? Or, what did I do? What kind of wrong did I do to someone? You see all these chains that bringing us down, and these are not God's intentions. God wants to set us free from all these lies for us to live for him. If you want to live for him, if you want to live for God, there's freedom in that relationship. There are no crippling diseases in that relationship. 
Hebrews 12, 2 says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne. He took the shame of the cross. The Messiah, Son of God, God in human form, came in our bodies to just to show us the way because we could not see with our eyes the magnificent, powerful existence of God. So he came down to earth to tell us how much he loved us, how much he wanted to deliver us, how much he wanted to set us free. And he took to shame to be crucified naked with criminals on a cross. A sinless Messiah never committed any crime. Perfect Lamb of God. To remove your shame, remove the shame from you. After failing in every area in my life, I failed in business, I failed in relationships, I failed in marriages, I failed in my motherhood, I failed in every area of my life. And I was telling myself, alongside with the enemy, you are a loser. I accepted the fact and the shame and the guilt, I am a failure. I failed. I cannot make it in this life. I accept. I failed. On the day I was going to kill myself, I was saying these things to myself. I was looking at a mirror in a bedroom, bathroom. I was looking at the mirror and repeating, and I failed. I cannot make it in this life. Life. And I don't want to carry this shame anymore. I don't want to carry this guilt anymore. I want to be set free from this. Many of you live your lives with guilt, shame, and condemnation. And many of you are raising your children with guilt, shame, and condemnation. They do things for you or they do right things for you because you put guilt on them. This is the way you are operating as a parent because this is what you learn from your parents. God wants to set you free. You also have guilt and condemnation and shame on you. <sighs> and you are chained. You are chained. I see in several passages, it doesn't talk about shame, but I feel the shame and that heaviness of shame over people that are suffering. Especially in the Middle East, when somebody is sick, something bad happens to them, the first thing we said, oh, what they have done? What has she done? What he has done? To deserve this. The first thing we want to condemn them with something. And Job says in 10:15, if I am guilty, woe to me. Even if I am innocent, I cannot lift my head, for I am full of shame and drown in my affliction. Man lost 10 of his children, he lost all his possessions, he lost all his health, and he lost his position in his society. And everybody is pointing their fingers at him. What have you done that you are going through this? What have you done to deserve this? This is where, this is the society I grew up. And then we see 
I can feel the shame in a man with leprosy. In Matthew 8, when he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed Jesus. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. This is a man at that time, leprosy, still, how many people do you know with leprosy? Recently, I heard a great testimony about a preacher that who was going and living with people who has leprosy and praying and speaking love of God with them. And they have their own communities in the world. So you don't see with advanced leprosy, people are walking around you. Why? Because they hide. Why? Because they have shame. They are ashamed of their appearances. They are disfigured. Almost like you burn a plastic and it, it gets disfigured and their faces, some of them, they don't have an ear or their nose is just melted down and they don't want other people to see them. They, they are ashamed of themselves. And that's really this little passage really breaks my heart because I feel that man because I was like that man because of my failures because of my ugliness because of my infirmities I was hiding and he doesn't even think that he is worthy to be healed he doesn't even think that Somebody can show mercy and compassion to him because he's already condemn, co have condemnation over himself. He has guilt and shame. Especially at that society. He's unclean. Nobody touches him. They go and they throw the food leftovers like a garbage. They throw it. And these people, they come from the caves where they are hiding. And they go and they eat whatever is thrown at them. He's ashamed of himself. He's hiding. And then Jesus comes. I love it. He comes. And he kneels before him. Because he feels like nothing. Can you feel his pain? I can because I've been there. He is in full of pain. He kneels before Jesus and he says, Lord, if you are willing. Lord, there is so much in that if you are willing. I, I know I am not worthy. I know I don't deserve it, Lord. I know I am ugly and despicable in appearance. I am full of shame. I know I'm nothing. But if you are willing. And what Jesus does. And he's a Jew. According to his law. He shouldn't have touched that man. Because that man is unclean. But Jesus. He said. Nothing comes. Outside of your body. Can make you unclean. Only comes what comes from inside out. Nothing can, nothing you can touch or eat can make you unclean. And Jesus reaches out to him and touches him and says, I am willing. That man is like, there's compassion, there's love, there's no condemnation, no guilt, no finding faults. <laughs> look at your ear, look at your nose, look at you. No. 
to touch us in us as I am. Be clean. And at that moment, he was cured. The man was cured right at that moment. But let me tell you, my friends, the cure that he received, the healing that he received was not only on her, his body. It was in his heart too. Do you feel the love? When I came before Messiah, Son of God, living Redeemer, he was touched with my weaknesses. When I fell and hurt, he didn't kick me and said, look what you have done. Shame on you. No. He said, come in. We have some cleansing to do. Come. We have some work to do. Just come. And he remo removed my shame. I carry the label divorced. I carry the label loser. I carry the label failure. And Jesus just cleansed me. And today, he wants to do the same thing for you. I am nothing special. God chose weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose foolish things of the world to shame the wise. If you are ordinary with a disease, with guilt and shame and condemnation, you are a perfect candidate for God to touch and cleanse you and give you a new heart, new purpose, new life. He's the master physician. He's the best doctor I know. If you have a crippling disease today, just call Dr. Jesus. If you want to be set free today, be delivered, call Dr. Jesus. He said, I didn't come for the healthy. I came for the sick. He came for people like you and me. Recently, a man called during one of my life programs in Turkish language. He called during the life program, and this is how it works. I have a little piece in my ear, and they tell me from the control room who is calling me. So this man was a Muslim man. They told me a Muslim man is calling, and he's what the reason he, he is calling. So I have a right to take the call. I have to say, hello, so and so is calling, or some people, they don't want to give their names, that's fine. I say, we have a caller. And then if I continue my message, which means I am go not going to take the call, they drop the call. So this is what they told into my ear. They said, Muslim man is calling. He's asking prayer for his daughter who recently committed suicide. It distracted me, my teaching, but I was teaching, I was speaking, however, I, my mind was thinking of him. I was thinking of him and his pain. And I didn't know at that moment what to tell him, but God told me, take the call. And I said, hello, we have a caller. How can I help you? What would you like to share? And this man, said, well, you could, you could feel in his voice the shame and the guilt and condemnation as a parent. He said, my 13-year-old daughter committed suicide. We just buried her. At that moment, I started just crying. I couldn't, as a parent, 
I didn't even want to think of a pain of losing a child. And this man was tormented, tormented terribly with shame. And as a parent, what could I have, have I done to prevent this? Why did this happen? And he was just tormented, tortured. And Lord gave me the answer in my heart. And you need to be very careful when you are speaking to people that you've never been to the road that they are walking. You need to have some kind of reverence and respect. And I said, I am terribly sorry for your loss. You can see it. Nobody can understand, so I'm not going to tell you I understand. But I feel your pain. However, in my faith, God is a God of the living. So we do not pray over death. But I can tell you this, and I heard this before. God's grace is faster than a bullet. God's grace is faster than a bullet. And I believe with all my heart, in her last breath, Jesus was in every way trying to reach out to her. This is all I can tell you. However, you are tormented. And you are living in great misery. And I have to tell you, if you don't surrender your life today, that misery will continue in the life to come after this life. But if you surrender your heart today, if you give your heart to Jesus Christ today, he will remove the shame, he will, he will remove the guilt and condemnation, and he will change your heart. I can promise you that. It may take time, because I know I have Christian friends who lost their children. It may take time, it may take a lot of suffering and questioning, and lots of things. But I can tell you this. If you surrender your heart to Jesus Christ, he will comfort you and he will change your destiny. And he said, yes, please, I want to give my heart to Jesus. And we pray together. He gave his heart to Jesus. Then the program was over. Entire week I was thinking of him. And I was just, I couldn't get him and his voice out of my mind. And I prayed for him. You know, you don't know. Because I was like, was it real? Did he really surrender his life? Did he really understand? You know, I, I, I just, I was so compassionate, filled with compassion for this man. So the following week, Another live show started, and during the program, this man called again. And they told me, this is the same man from last week. And he said, I said, hello, and he said, I just want you to know, since last week, this is real. I called to testify, Jesus Christ is real, because this is, this joy that I have, this freedom that I have is supernatural. I never had this before in my life, he said. He said, I have so much joy, I cannot describe it. He said, I am a poor man. I have nothing to give to Jesus. But I thought and I prayed, what can I give to Jesus? And I found I can give Jesus something. I want to donate my kidney, <laughs> he said, he called. <laughs> He said, I am announcing on air, I want to donate my kidney for Jesus. When I go speak at Western churches, I say, there's nothing better than a seeing a Muslim receive Jesus Christ. You have a hard time getting ties into your church. When a Muslim gives their heart to Jesus Christ, they want to 
give their kidneys. <laughs> that man was so much filled with joy and freedom. Freedom from condemnation, freedom from shame, freedom from all the stuff that devil was putting on him. He was free and he had joy of the Lord. And the following weeks, after a few weeks, another man called and he said, I received Jesus Christ through your program too. And I want to donate my kidney too. And I said, what is this program? A kidney donation? Everybody calls to donate their kidneys. But my point is, when you know where you are, when you know the shame and guilt, Maybe there is one I am talking right now. You were raped and the shame, condemnation and guilt comes with it. Even though you were forced, even though it was not in your power, but there is a shame and God wants to remove that shame and tell you it was not your fault. And you are thinking, what was I dressing? What was I wearing? What was I doing? What was I saying that caused that? I remember when my Muslim husband was kicking me on the floor and spitting at me and calling me names. And I was condemning myself that I was not good enough. I was not a good Muslim woman to please him. And I had shame. If you are abused today, I just want you to know. You were victimized. And it was not your fault. But today, Jesus Christ is telling you, you don't have to live as a victim anymore. I am not a victim anymore. I am a survivor through Jesus Christ. And you can be the survivor too. You can be that freedom warrior too for Jesus Christ. If you just give your heart to him today. With a simple prayer, come Lord Jesus, I am giving you my heart. I am giving you my shame, my guilt, my sins, poor, forgive me. I believe you die on the cross for my sins. And you rose on the third day. I invite you into my heart. Come inside of me and live in me. Be the center of my life.